Laurel? Yanny? You want to know what I want to hear, Gavin? Get back to work. That's what I want to hear. Ass. The following podcast contains... Hey, 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 watch the language, okay? Your language is offensive. Hey, 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 watch your language. Watch your language in front of the lady, punk! Watch your language, okay? Oh, what language? Yeah. Give me a it's a hat. Watch the language, little boy. You just watch your language, mister. Explicit language. Hello and welcome to the podcast that asks a simple question. When you call the cops on anyone sleeping on a dorm room couch, first of all, do you even college, bro? And second of all, what the hell were you thinking? I am your host, Dave Bledsoe, and this is a Friday, May 18th, 2018. What kind of white nonsense is this edition of the show where I ask white people to put their phones down for just a damn minute? Stay tuned. The What the Hell Are You Thinking podcast is brought to you by 912, the rational emergency number. Are you witnessing something you don't like and aren't sure is a crime? Call 912 and our trained operators will help you stop being such a shit. Strangers engaged in illegal activities in your neighborhood? 912. People you think are scary because they're a different ethnicity? 912. Black people doing anything you would not be concerned with with white people doing? 912. Add one when you dial and calm the fuck down. A reasonable white person would be on the phone and tell you to knock that shit off and mind your own damn business. Unless you're calling about a barbecue, because then, fuck you, Brenda. You keep that shit to yourself. Number five, don't try a new recipe. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. Well, I thought I might add some raisins and almonds into the potato salad. Do you want to die? I will kill you over potato salad. The potato salad has to be tried and true, approved by generations of family before you can make it. And you wanna try a new potato salad recipe? This recipe goes back as far as our family crest. Potato salad does not have raisins and almonds in it. But I saw on Pinterest, you wanna die today? By the way, speaking of potato salad, if your auntie doesn't have a fat arm under here, I don't trust our potato salad or greens. I think this arm is where all the recipes are stored. And if it ain't jiggling, she ain't got it. Last week on the pod, I glossed over some of my history when I talked about the agony of answering 911 calls. Because some people just cannot handle the responsibility of making such calls. Helen! Helen! What's the number for 911? And if your house is burning down or you've got, I don't know, an orc horde breaching your walls, I can understand a certain level of excitement. Those folks are not the problem. The problem caller is the caller who does not understand the essential nature of 911. Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. Some people believe the definition of an emergency is rather more generic than the system was designed to handle. For example, your neighbor's mower being too loud in the middle of the afternoon is not an emergency. Or seeing the same blue car circle your block three times at three o'clock in the afternoon is not generally a reason one might call an emergency number, particularly when the car circling your block is a clearly marked public utility doing inspections. But by far, the most egregious misuse of the 911 emergency number was the suspicious person. Suspicious how? Not one of these people could satisfactorily explain how this person was suspicious or at least not honestly explained, because the real reason the person was suspicious was universally... Because you're black. You are. He is. Fifteen years in law enforcement and the number of white, suspicious person calls I answered could be tallied on two hands with fingers left over. Same time, I can count the number of times black people called about a suspicious person and have a hand and a half left over. And if answering these calls was bad, being dispatched was worse because the responding officer knows there's nothing going on and they know it's a white person white peopling. But just in case, you gotta roll out and treat that bullshit call seriously because that one time you don't everything goes to hell so you know what i have some sympathy i truly do because fucking white people are the absolute worst in the past few weeks the problem of white fear has been in the news quite a bit because thanks to the action of just a few terrible white people roughly 60 million or so of them who voted for an anthropomorphic tanning bed yeah White people invented that. 
have raised the tensions in this country. And one of the side effects of president by white people for white people is a lot more well-meaning white people are paying attention now. So yay for us, I guess. But here, here is just a short list of reasons that law-abiding black folks have had the cops call them in recent weeks. Black women golfing too slow. They were called twice. Golfing too slow. Is it possible to golf too slow? And a boring game. Boring game for boring people. You ever watch golf on television? It's like watching flies fuck. Sitting in a Starbucks without buying coffee. If sitting in a Starbucks without purchasing a cup of their shitty charcoal flavored coffee is a crime, I expect to see paddy wagons outside every single one of the borough of Manhattan immediately. In the rare case of Expanded Horizons, a pair of Native American teens touring a college campus had the cops called on them because they skeeved out a white lady. Oh, here's another one. Taking your luggage out of your Airbnb. And I swear, this is true. The reason that they got the cops called on them is because they didn't wave back at the noisy neighbor. I guess they must have been living next door to Gladys Kravitz. There's something very strange about her. Gladys, will you stop? No, Gladys never stops. That's what makes her funny, I guess. Except, you know, when she's calling the cops on you. Oh, here's one. Making a purchase at Nordstrom Rack, which implies questionable taste in clothing, but it's definitely not criminal behavior. Oh, there's another one. Performing a house inspection with the legal paperwork after he told the neighbor what he was doing and showed her the paperwork. But of course, my hands down favorite is sleeping in the dorm room common area. I was a campus cop for four years. If I arrested people for sleeping in a dorm lounge, the university would be out of students in about a week. And this was just in the past few weeks. It's not a new phenomenon. Remember back in 2009? God, those were good days. But even then, Harvard professor Louis Gates was arrested for trying to enter his own house on campus. President Obama invited Professor Gates and the cop up to the White House to have a beer and talk it over. And how did that work out? Not well. When I was an Air Force cop back in the 90s, we had callers that we knew by name. We would even call them over the radio. Hey, uh, Brenda called was an actual radio dispatch every patrol officer knew, and we knew that that meant Brenda saw a black guy. This was on an Air Force base. We had black people there. White people love to call the cops. For us, it's like asking to see a manager when we're unhappy with the number of horsey sauce packets we received with our Arby's order. I'm going to speak to a manager. And I want to say in defense of my Mayo Sapien brothers and sisters that calling the cops is not an explicitly racist thing to do, like burning a cross or voting for a candidate who repeatedly says and does racist things, because we happily call the cops on each other when mildly inconvenienced by something or another that a white person does, like letting their dog shit on our lawn. For most of us, calling the cops is what we're supposed to do. It's genetic passive aggressivism, cultural tattletaling that goes back to the days when we would run to the village priest to report a witch, hexed our milk cow, and we're pretty sure we should burn Edna back apple at the stake. White people possess an instinctive need to dominate other white people in a way that can't be traced back directly to us because we wouldn't want things to be uncomfortable in the neighborhood. White people are crazy. I promise you that lady that called the cops on the barbecue in Oakland was not being overtly racist. She was just doing what white people do being passive aggressive. She was being complicitly racist because she couldn't recognize her privilege. Do you want to know when black people call the cops? When they've exhausted every other possibility of dealing with the search situation. If a person of color calls the cops But let's just say some shit is going down! Shots are being fired. People are getting their ass kicked. The, cork, the orcs are way over the wall and they're inside the city because they know a very simple truth that when the cops show up in a minority neighborhood, someone is going to jail and it could be them. They they also know that the cop, when the cops show up in a black neighborhood, somebody could get killed and it could be them. Why do they know this? They see it every fucking day. From an article in The Atlantic, quote, black people are less likely to call the police than white people, according to federal data on requests for police assistance from 2011, before many of the high profile killings of black Americans that are etched in the collective national memory. Black Americans were slightly less inclined to call the police for help than their white counterparts. The data hint at the result that the estimation black people make daily, whether involving the police will help a situation or make it worse. Marginalized communities do not feel confident in reaching out to the authorities that are created to protect them, and that is extremely problematic, unquote. No shit. Let me see if I can break this down for my fellow honkies. You know how when you're driving along, 
and you're going with the flow of traffic, you're probably over the speed limit, but not crazy over the speed limit. And all of a sudden, a police car pulls onto the highway, and everyone reacts like this. Shit, man! Oh, shit! The cop, man! The cop is so- all of a sudden, the entire highway steps on their brakes and slows down to five under the speed limit. And it doesn't matter that no one was speeding. All that matters is that everyone knows the cop is there just to pull someone, anyone over, and give them a ticket. And that person could very well be you. It's random. Even capricious. This fucking cop is there just to mess with you, man. And you can't afford your insurance to go up. Shit, man. It's the fucking cops. The fucking cops, man. This is exactly what it's like to be black people every day and have the cops show up anywhere. On top of this feeling that the cops are just there as some random force to fuck with your lives, there's also the idea that they might just want to shoot your ass. That is the part that makes it different for generic white dudes on the highways and generic white black guys on any given street. The whole shooting part. If you're a white person, you never think about where you are going to put your hands when a cop approaches you. You never worry about the cop putting you up against the wall and patting you down for a weapon. You never worry about whether or not you look threatening. Shit, you can even be an asshole to the cop that pulls you over and not worry about spending the night in jail because white dudes are not conditioned by society to think that way. It wasn't put in your head from birth that you needed to be careful around cops. I know this bothers you fellow white humans. I understand because it bothers me too. We didn't cause this. I mean, we did, but not us personally, and we've got no immediate control over it. If we could Harry Potter the situation with a depulso racism, we'd be waving our wands like we were conducting a fucking symphony. My God, you are such a nerd. Sadly, that spell does not work on 400 years of systemic and cultural racism. I've tried. Nicole Hannah-Jones wrote in Pearl Pro Public back in 2015, quote, For those of you reading this who may not be black or perhaps Latino, this is my chance to tell you that a substantial portion of your fellow citizens of the United States of America have little expectation of being treated fairly by the law or receiving justice. It's possible this will come as a surprise to you. But to a very real extent, you've grown up in a different country than I have. As Khalil Gibran Mohammed, author of Condemnation of Blacks, Blackness, puts it, white people, by and large, do not know what it's like to be occupied by a police force. They don't understand it because it's not the type of policing they experience, because they are treated like individuals. They believe that if I am not breaking the law, I will never be abused. We are not criminals because we are black, nor are we somehow the only people in America who don't want to live in safe neighborhoods. Yet, many of us cannot fundamentally trust the people who are charged with keeping us and our communities safe, unquote. I mean, why should they? Honestly, why should a person of color, and a, or a black person in particular, feel safe when cops are around? Because reality has taught them a harsh lesson in the names of John Crawford, Rekia Boyd, Ihana Jones, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Sean Bell, Abner Luima, Tamir Rice, Philandro Castile, or Stefan Clark. I could go on a long time reading the list of unarmed black men and women killed by the police or cite statistics that young blacks are 21 times more likely to die police than young white men. These are the realities of black lives in America. So when you call the cops because you thought that having the barbecue in the park where they're having the barbecue is wrong, they have, there are fucking consequences for doing so, and you ought to be aware of them, but you aren't because you live in a safe, safe white, happy little white privilege bubble of beckiness. And I know you hate the term white privilege, but fuck you. New York City white people smoke weed at the same rate that people of color do, yet for some mysterious reason, Chad with the man bun is eight times less likely to be arrested than any given black person. And trust me, if I were still a cop, Chad's ass would spend the nights in the tombs just because of the man bun alone. Love the man bun. You started the trend. We could smoke weed, drink on stoops, call cops assholes, bike down the sidewalk, drive Interstate 95 in Georgia, all without worrying that the cops will much notice and probably not care if we do because we're white. That is just how the world works for us. On every New York City subway car, there's a sign that reads, if you see something, say something. Well, I'm here to tell you, before you hit those digits on a person of color, ask yourself, did I... Did I actually see something? If a white person was doing the exact same thing, would I be on that phone 
Would you, Brenda? If the answer is no, just let it go. That's the sign I want to see in the subway. If the answer is yes, next ask yourself, is what I'm seeing a crime? Like a real crime, not like a hairy fat man not wearing a shirt crime. No, no, that is not okay. If the answer is yes, this is a crime, then call the cops because that's what 911 is for. When I first moved to Harlem back in 2005, there weren't many white people in my building. In fact, there were very few white people on my block. Moving into the neighborhood put the onus of a adapting on me. The things I was used to coming from an upper middle class white neighborhood in Washington, D.C. weren't the norm for the neighborhood. For example, someone blasting their music at 3 a.m. We'd get the cops called you on where I came from, but on my block, it was hideously normal and no one called the cops. It sucked, but you know what you did? You put your ear plugged in and you dealt with it. And as much as I hated the practice, it was not on me to apply my norms to the people who lived here when I moved in. I did my best to be a good neighbor and adapt to the place where I lived. And I like to think I succeeded. But since then, an awful a lot of white people have followed me up here. And uh, I'd like to apologize for this. It, it wasn't my intention. They just sort of showed up unexpectedly. So many whites. If I'd known this would have happened, I would have moved to Brooklyn. But now they're all here and we've all got to deal with them together. I'm so sorry. Don't scare me like that, colonizer. So to all my marshmallow people out there, just chill the fuck out and put your phone down, okay? You don't need to call the cops on every little thing. Somebody's getting their ass beat or guns going off. That's when you dial. It's not complicated and you shouldn't worry so much. If you just mellow out, learn how to live with everyone without being so white, maybe, maybe you'll get an invitation to the cookout. But if you do, trust me on this. Do not bring anything except paper plates and maybe a bottle of brown liquor. And no matter what, do not sit down at that spades table unless you know how to play spades and you don't. Trust me on this. I thought I knew how to play spades. I don't. <laughs> that is it for our show this week. Seriously, white people, what's going on in your heads? Stop doing this shit. It's bad. So stop being so, so white. And trust me, this is coming from the whitest man you ever going to know. You're, you're, you're embarrassing me. Speaking of shameful and embarrassing things, you should rate and review the show wherever you find your podcast. It's uh, it's how you let people know you've got no shame or decorum, and it invites them to share in your bad taste in podcasts. If you want to help me spread my shame, donate to our Patreon at patreon.patreon.com slash whatthehellpodcast. One dollar buys you exclusive content, like our ex -com up upcoming expose on Fat Albert. We're nothing, if not topical. All of our shows may be found, the ones not about Fat Albert anyway, at www.whatthehellpodcast.com and the show name on SoundCloud. All of my thoughts and 280 character rants are on Twitter at the hell underscore podcast or the show name on Facebook. For me, Mayo Man Dave Bledsoe, producer Whole Milk Gavin, and all the other fictional crackers on this show, we want to say, we love you, white people. We really so do. You just disappoint us from time to time. Kind of we'll see you all you know, next week. The ones that like to, you know hurt themselves bro skateboard ollie bro kick flip split your lip bro kick me in the nuts bro you get what i'm saying right white people i get bullied in school i can't wait till i'm a cop so i can bully you white people hey white people no no we can't dance and i don't whoop my kids or spank their hands white people Bad Michael, bad. Who's a bad Michael? Go to your room, Michael. If you poke me on my arm, I bruise easily. So I only quarterback in the football league. I like to watch porn. I can fap for days. And my favorite potato chips are Lay's because they're white. I take weird drugs like ecstasy, mushrooms, crystal meth, and LSD. We put it in a pipe for a homemade bong. And watch out for the priest. He will rape your son. And most of us would die trying out for fear factor. I guess that's why they say I'm just a country loving, deer hunting, rabbit eating, redneck, inbreeding, beer drinking, small penis. Did I mention we drive a tractor? We're red when we're mad, when we're sick we're green. Only race in the world that eats sardines. White girls flat butts and I know that's mean. But if you try to eat the booty, it tastes like saltines. 
far away from that anus. A white woman came to me to bash my song until she realized I was black and then she zipped her purse. White people, I get bullied in school. I can't wait till I'm a cop so I can bully you. White people. Hey. White people, no, no, we can't dance. And I don't whoop my kids or spank their hands. White people. See, this is probably why white kids end up shooting up schools. Hey, hey, hey.